technology has just come so far and made it more convenient for people in so many other ways, it's just found its way out into to the driving into the highway creating problems there now for us. Trooper Scott Schreiner is out on a special assignment catching distracted drivers. Looks like he's on his phone. He knows. How you doing, sir? See the license please or registration? We are sometimes looked at as the bad guys for having to go out and enforce a law, but if someone makes it from their destination home safely, and uh, can kiss her loved ones good, good night that night, then, you know, we've done our job. A job that needs doing and has become one of the top three priorities of the New York State Police. It's far more serious than most people realize. Uh, in fact, over 5,000 people each year are killed in the United States as a result of distracted driving crashes and uh, a couple of hundred thousand injured. Now, if you're thinking these incidents may be because they were just bad drivers, think again. Studies show that cell phone use while driving, whether handheld or not, impairs a person the same way that having a blood alcohol concentration of 0 .08 does, which, as you should know, is considered a DWI. And you'll see a vehicle that'll cross over the double solid line, cross over the white line. Obviously, they're not paying attention to where they're going. They're not staying in their lane. Basically, we're going to just issue him a citation. History shows that that's the way we've been able to change behavior with seatbelts, drunk driving, speeding. And a valuable tool in their pursuit of these distracted drivers is what we're sitting in right now. It's called a site vehicle that's short for Concealed Identity Traffic Enforcement Vehicle. The state police says they plan to roll out about 40 this year. The more that we can educate society and the more they start to realize that, you know what, it does make a difference. Uh, there are less fatalities, there are less accidents. I think people will, will begin to accept it more and, and understand that it, it is being done for a reason. For YNN, I'm Megan Cruz. Spend a little money. The Marine Corps League has its mission. And to find something fun for the kids. Specifically for its Toys for Tots program. It can be a little daunting for some. It's tough to find something for a certain age. But it's just been made easier with some help from Dunkin' Donuts. Twenty-five thousand dollars they're going to spend in, in, in I'll tell you, that's a, that's a big load off our shoulders. So on Wednesday, people from both organizations took to the aisles of a Toys R Us. How you doing, Tim? They loaded shopping carts with toys that will eventually fill the Toys for Tots train. Let's do some books. And get two more, yellow, all the colors. Everybody loves superheroes. Every year, the toy-filled train makes its way across the state. This year, on December 8th, it will go from Binghamton to Delanton, and then on December 9th, from Albany to Rouse's Point near Canada. Perfect. This is the fourth year the two have teamed up. Toys for Tots coordinator Bob Becker says Duncan's donation makes up 40% of the total toys they distribute a year. Without them, it would put a big, big, big hole in our operation. We would have the Toys for Tots, but it wouldn't be as big and successful. I have had the privilege to ride it for the last four years, and you see those smiles on these kids' faces when Sandy gets off the train, even when they get a nice warm coat or a toy, the joy that brings to them during the holiday season, it's second to none. For one member of the Marine Corps League, Duncan's donation means he could give to kids who grew up like him. Grew up in the South End, you know, times were tough. When we were kids, we had hand-me-down clothes and <laughs> hand-me-down toys, you know. <laughs> stuff like that. So to be able to do this for kids, it's like a miracle. Reporting in Colony, Megan Cruz, YNN. It's a busy morning at the Mill Spa home. It's usually just Grace and Dennis, but on Thursday, they had some visitors. Three of their seven children stopped by with several of their grandkids to say goodbye to a family friend. It's got a lot of emotional attachment to it, which sounds kind of weird talking about a tree that way, but it, it does. When Grace bought this Racklin Lane home back in 1976, the tree was as tall as her. Not anymore. Uh, to see if I could find any pictures. Grace says the tree's grown with her family. We've tied all our yellow ribbons around it for my son and my son-in-laws when they've been in Iraq and Afghanistan and the all the banners for graduations and babies coming home. That's why on Thursday, the tree people have arrived. 
those babies couldn't help but cry about the tree's last day here on Racklin Lane. Because we had so much memories and now it's going to get gone. We've had so much memories with the Easter egg hunting, with the, having the eggs in the tree. We used to um, play tag around it. And it's been there all of my life. Yeah. What a picture of my tree. We the tree's new home will be East Capitol Park. It was chosen to be one of two trees in the annual New York State Tree Lighting and Fireworks event on December 2nd. At least it's going out honorably. You know, in a big blaze of glory with lots of lights on it. So, you know, that kind of takes the sting out of it. After all, it is the season of giving, and the family's giving up a lot. I'm happy because other people are going to see it. Because other people are going to watch it get lit in that. I hope everybody enjoys it as much as we did. Oh, I have this one. Oh, Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. The family plans to attend the tree lighting ceremony. They say when they see everyone smile, when their tree is lit up with thousands of lights, it'll make their now bare lawn worth it. Reporting in Loudonville, Megan Cruz, YNN. Some of us haven't seen each other in over 45 years. Today we're going to challenge the challengers. I, I love it. Seeing all my old buddies, you know, and helping the challengers out, it's it's a good feeling, I'll tell you. Challengers Baseball League is a group of children and young adults that uh, have various disabilities, um, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, spinal bifida. Today's our second annual fundraiser game that we're having. We kind of threw the, your, uh, the rule book away a long time ago. It's a sport they love. It's a sport that they can go out and feel like they're just like all the other kids. I can't even describe how it makes me feel to have these people come out here to help out my kids. You know, the kids having a chance to play against old guys, you know? <laughs> Last August, uh, we literally lost everything. Um, right here where I'm standing, the water was three feet deep. We got hit with Irene and Lee it destroyed our fields, our, we still have a dugout that's still destroyed, and it totally wiped out everything in our concession. We lost everything, all the equipment. That's it, Mike, you're on, you're on, buddy. Well, a lot of um, different organizations and businesses and like that, they've been trying to come forward and helping us out. We've got the fields up and running really good. <laughs> Even the uh, kids and adults with the Rotterdam them challengers, they came down. We had a park cleanup day a couple weeks ago. It's really heartwarming. Nobody wins or loses, everybody wins. We're just here to have a good time and support the Rotterdam Tri-County Challenger Baseball League. As he was going down Route 20, unbeknownst to him, there was a black bull, an Angus bull that had gotten out of its pen and Ralph hit it. He was riding, doing what he loved most, and that was seven years ago, last weekend. Yeah. This ride is always the Ralphie run. This year, the weather prediction's been kind of not favorable, but usually we average about 275 to 400 bikes. Here we go. Yep, yep. So we'll leave the fairgrounds and we'll head up to Prattsville. This community and outlaying communities were devastated by Irene. We're thrilled to make an awareness about what's happened, the recovery that's taken place up there. He wouldn't have wanted us to stop riding, and uh, so we said, why not? And here we are seven years later. Getting in the wind. That's what I'm talking about. We've raised over $200,000 since my husband's accident and all of the money goes, 100% of it goes back into the school systems. Ralphie was not only a biker, but he was all about helping children. What we're doing today with the, with the bike a for the kids, I mean, it's what Ralphie would have wanted. Happy birthday, Ralphie. Yay! Right safe. Right safe. So he left an impact in every child's life that he met, and he still does. He's still here with us. You know, somebody who shouldn't have been gone, one of the nicest people in the world, just up and disappeared. But seeing this on a greater scale just kind of makes you, makes you realize that he's still here, you know, he's still with us. I want to thank the community that supports this 
fundraiser and has supported the Carker family as we rebuild our lives.